Okay. Yes. So we're officially live. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Because I think if you like don't go live right at the time, you have like a certain time frame where you need to go live. Otherwise, it kicks you out. So now my phone's giving me all these notifications that I'm live. <laughs> This is my third lunch, or wait, this is my, I've done a lunch and learn with Pet Relief, which is a CBD company mm -hmm. um, out of Colorado. We did one with Red Barns the other day. Jason uh, came over to the shop. He was actually like in the area and Jason came to the shop and uh, did a live one with us there. We talked about natural treats and chews. Um, we did one with Super Snap. And then you are our fourth one. Awesome. Yes. And I'm then, notified I'm in the show, so I guess I'm <laughs> good on my side. <laughs> yeah. And then next week we are going to talk with Andra, um, who's our primal rep. So she's going to talk about raw food options, and meal toppers and stuff like that um, for people who feed maybe a diamond product or dry food and they want to add um, some more protein to their dog's diet. And then we're going to talk um, to uh, Krissa with Fromm as well. So we're just trying to cover all of our bases here. Yeah. But we can go ahead and get started. So we've got some people watching. That's exciting. Um, I'm upstairs in my apartment. I hope the internet works good. I know the last few live lunch and learns I've done, I'm like, pixelated and blurry so i hope this works out good yeah and so, i'm actually in a hotel so yeah, out of the hotel <laughs> the here working oh, but I'm glad to be a part of it yeah so we're happy to have adam Campeter with us he is a diamond pet food representative and uh you actually live you live at the lake don't you yeah originally i'm from uh wardsville so yeah I guess everybody would know where that's at around jeff city I would, oh, I would yeah. oh yeah so he's, um, Adam's going to talk a lot today about all of the diamond pet food options that we carry in the store. I'm going to chime in, of course. Um, and I wanted to talk about the new grain inclusive recipe, the Taste of the Wild Ancient Grain. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and for those of you who are watching, like pet food has just become, I mean, dog and cat food has just taken off, especially this year. We've had a lot of new people come in. And they have adopted new dogs and new cats. Um, so that was, I guess, one of the nice things about this crazy year's pet adoptions have been on the rise. And we have a lot of people coming in and they're asking what is the best thing to feed their pet. There's so many options. You can do diets with grains or without. Um, you can, there's so many different animal proteins now. And so we're just gonna touch on all of those if you're confused about what would be best for your pet. Um, hopefully this Lunch and Learn will help you guys out a little bit, or if you're just curious to learn more about Diamond and all of their products, um, this should help. So we'll just dive right in with Diamond. Um, let's just talk about too, where you guys are located at because you're right here in our backyard. Yeah, we're the, uh, we're the local pet food company in Missouri, Central Missouri especially, uh, headquartered in Meda, Missouri. Yep. It is a family owned company, um, second generation owners right now. They are all from the Jefferson City area, St. Thomas, uh, Wardsville area. But started in 1970, been a family company ever since. Today we celebrated our 50th anniversary, which is pretty cool. Yay, yeah. Cool. yeah um, but yeah, we kind of, we started out just to give you a little brief background, started out as a, a, a feed company back in 1970. Um, and kind of gradually morphed into pet food as the markets changed and everything. Um, and we've been really blessed, just uh, mm -hmm. really grown into a top manufacturer in the pet food world. Sorry about that. I'm getting some updates here on my computer. But, um, yeah, you guys, have, Diamond like took off. Like you were yeah. one of the pioneers for pet food, I feel like for sure. Yeah, and it's, uh, like I said, we've been really blessed, but uh, 
it's just a cool, I, I've kind of been around them my whole life, but it's, it's really cool to see the story kind of progress. And, uh, it's a great family that, that runs it. They still go to work every day. Um, and it's just a central part of our life. So, mm-hmm. uh, like I said, it's just a good local company. They do a lot of great stuff for the community in central Missouri. You guys may know, um, but they do a lot of stuff behind the scenes as well. But, uh, yeah, they do. Real cool deal. They've got, we've kind of morphed into several locations. We've got the unique thing. Well, not unique, but one of the makes us different is, you know, we manufacture all, all of our pet food in our, in our own facilities. And that's, yes. I know that may seem common, but it's really not in the pet food industry. Um, there's several companies out there that, that outsource manufacturing and they really don't have that firsthand control of it like we do. So yeah. we offer everything from, you know, buying our ingredients all the way through finished product. We have, we have our hand in it. So it's, it's something that we feel we've got to be pretty good at and we really enjoy it. So. Even down to your packaging. I mean, that's local using. Um, yeah. more right. packaging. Yeah. Yeah. Morris packaging. Yeah. That's Jim. Jim Bob's a good friend of ours and, yeah, he's a great company as well. Really good guy. But yeah, it's I know that employs a lot of guys, a lot of people, a lot of people in Jeff City work there yeah. too. So. Yeah, that says a lot about you guys being family owned and keeping it within the family, and um, that the family is still every bit a part of it still today. I mean, in yourself included, and um, and then you guys just ex- not expanded, but you opened a new headquarters here in Jeff City too, right? Yeah, that's a new uh, a new corporate office over there. Corporate office, cool. Yeah, it's uh, just for the kind of the executive management team. Yeah, so. is it finished or is it still being built? Yeah, I think you know I've, I, honestly, haven't, I, haven't been, I haven't even been in there yet. I know it's been under construction for a while, and uh, I'm just out on the road, and they don't they don't let me in the office too much. So okay. I know it, I'm I know it's done. Everybody's pretty well moved in. I don't know if all the the bits and pieces are completely done on it, but it's, yeah, it's full up and running and functional now. So. Mm-hmm. Well, it's, and so it sounds like you guys are, you're totally hands on with your manufacturing. Where does your meat come from? Is that um, kind of around here too? Yeah. So a lot, majority of our meat is, is pulled regionally. We've got five plants across the country, manufacturing facilities like we do down in Mita. Um, and we pull as much as we can regionally within those, those areas of our facilities. Okay. You know, like in California, we got a plant in Cal- we got two plants in California, one obviously in Missouri, one in southern Arkansas, and one in South Carolina over on the East Coast. But we okay. pull as much as we can regionally, and yeah, the majority of our ingredients would be meat products. Yep. Uh, we use a lot of meat and meal, and uh, yeah, a lot of that's pulled regionally. Your chicken, your beef. You know, we started sourcing pork, um, lamb. Lamb comes from pretty much the same place. It's, it's across the seas, across the pond over there in New Zealand and Australia. Yeah. And a lot of our, uh, you know, venison comes from over there as well. That's a big export for them. Mm-hmm. And, and that's because those are the best places to get. Yeah. Sources. They just yeah. are. Yeah. That's a big, you know, you know, that's, that's a big business for them. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of regulations Yes. that they take into account over there. And it's just, it really is the safest place you can get them as well as the most abundant place you can get them. So, yep. and a lot of our fish, we use a lot of fish. Um, we pull as much as we can wild caught, but a lot of that's been, you know, sourced out. It's just, there's a shortage on wild caught fish. So a lot of, some of it is, is farmed, but we, you know, we do all the quality control checks and everything on that as well. And there's nothing wrong with farm fish per se, but um, like I said, a lot of that comes from the Pacific Northwest, Alaska. Um, and a lot of it is farmed from South America as well. So, yeah. What about? Yeah, you know, that's kind of where where the meat comes from. No, oh, yeah. That's. I mean, I think people want to know that for sure. Like, I mean, those are the first, you know, three to five plus ingredients on on the back of the bag that people want to see. So, yeah. Um, knowing where meat is coming from is really important, and knowing that it's regionally sourced is is a plus. Yeah. Um, Something else that I think a lot of people or something that I think of anyways is like, is the meat ever rendered that comes to your all's facilities that like cook twice before it comes or is it fresh? You know, how, how, how does that work? So we, we use both actually. So in, in, in meat, you know, there's, there's, there's quote unquote fresh meat um, without the bone content. 
which we use a lot of. Majority of our diets do have fresh meat labeled as the number one, especially in the taste of the wild. Um, that's something we do a little bit different. A lot of companies don't do that. They they don't mess with with fresh meat. I mean, that's pretty much fresh and never frozen meat for the most part, with the exception of overseas stuff like lamb. But uh, you know, that comes with that is is a food safety concern. Anytime you have fresh, fresh meat. Right. Like that, Oh, I'm getting some echo here. I'm on here twice. Oh, okay. there you go. Okay. Okay. I lost you for a second, so I was nervous. Okay. No, that's okay. Anytime you have fresh meat like that, there does come a concern with food safety. Um, you know, obviously the pathogens and fresh meat are a concern, but we've really taken those into account in all of our facilities. We have, you know, segregated areas for handling that, but we really believe having real meat, fresh meat like that is very beneficial mm -hmm. to the pet. Um, it really increases palatability, the, the flavor and the acceptance of the food. Plus, uh, it's really a lot more digestible too. not having that extra. When I say fresh meat, it's it's minus the bone content. So that's actually the, you know, the, the meat. Um, and then on the other side of that, we also use meal, which is that is rendered that. OK, you no, know, that is rendered. That, that includes the uh, it's basically what's left over after the human industry gets finished. They, they grind that into a meal, which is a great source of protein. Um, but it is rendered, it's dried. So it's a lot more uh, fortified, you know, I guess it's a lot more dense in protein for, for less, I don't know how to say it. It's more condensed protein per se without the moisture. Most of the moisture is taken out. So anytime you put that into a pet food, it really, it really backs up that protein content um, to the fresh meat. And, uh, you know, it's good to have that meal in there. That's why a lot of your dog food out there, you know, kibble is almost always going to have a meal in it just because that's how you get the, the protein content boosted up in a dog food is, is by putting that meal in there. Um, okay. it's, it's pretty much, I wouldn't say impossible, but I'm not the, the formulation guy, but it's very difficult to do to formulate a kibble with, with no meal. Um, mm -hmm just to have the consistency and you know the bind the binding of the kibble together you you have to have that stuff you know and all along with your fiber and and your starch that helps bind the uh the kibble together so the dog can enjoy it but right yeah yeah and we carry um diamond naturals uh dog food we wanted to stick with a formula that didn't have any corn wheat or soy so that's why we went with the diamond naturals approach um we carry a lot of uh, maybe all of the diamond naturals we have the large breed puppy the large breed adult which is lamb and chicken and then we have uh your beef recipe and your lamb recipe your all life stages recipe mm -hmm. we have we have all of those we also have the diamond natural skin and coat mm -hmm. um which is their grain free version it's salmon and potato so we carry that as well and then we have the diamond naturals canned recipes too um, and then, of course, um, for cats, we have the indoor cat recipe, um, as well as the canned food that that complements the dry recipe. If you ever want some canned food with that, and we've been really happy with it. Um, a lot of people, if anybody's watching, and you have maybe you have multiple dogs um, or bigger dogs, and you're looking for a good quality food at a good price point, and also in like in a bigger bulk bag. Uh, the Diamond Naturals is great because you're going to get a 40 pound bag versus mm -hmm. some of the other foods that we really like Taste of the Wild that we'll talk about here in a second or Prey. Those are like 28 pounds, 25 pounds. So it's nice for people that want to buy a, a bigger size bag. Diamond Naturals still has that 40 pound option. Yeah. And you guys, yeah, like you said, you pretty much have the full line. So very good yeah. representation of the of the Diamond Naturals. Yeah. Diamond Naturals is definitely one of our best sellers. Um, we take samples in the shop. If anybody's watching, you're interested in trying some samples for dogs or cats before you purchase a bag. Um, I forgot to mention too, Diamond Naturals has small breed puppy and small breed adult. We carry both of those. The puppy's just chicken. Um, and then the adult, there's a chicken and a lamb option. So we have a wide selection of Diamond Naturals for sure. Yeah, the you know just to touch on the naturals, um, like you said, it's a great value. I really, I truly believe this and always have. 
I think it's the best valued pet food in the pet food industry for what you're getting. Um, it's a big 40 pound bag. It's less than a dollar per pound. I mean, if you can feed your pet for less than a dollar per pound, a good quality diet like that, it's, it's, it's pretty untouchable as far as, you know, the value you're getting for what you're paying. Um, I put it up against any grain, grain inclusive diet out there, any pet food, really. I mean, it's, it's probably my favorite dog food to sell. <laughs> uh, I, just know, I just know the success of it. I mean, I work hunting shows. I watch a lot of stores sell a lot of it. I've seen a lot of happy customers on it and it's, it's just mm -hmm. a uh, really bulletproof mm -hmm. dog food. I, I don't know how many motorheads are out there, but I really compare it to the, like the Honda small engine of the, of the pet food. World. It's just so dependable, um, mm -hmm. consistent, you know, just goes to work for you every day, day in and day out. And it, it's just a really hard working dog food. And it is, it's a good food. Your pro 89 is new too. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so the the Pro eighty nine, I um, it's a it's a little bit different. It goes a little bit above and beyond what the Naturals has. Um, you know, we named it Pro eighty nine. It's it's more of a performance diet. It's a thirty percent protein, twenty percent fat, which is a little higher on the fat and protein diet for those performance dogs. Um, the story behind it's kind of in the name Pro eighty nine. The eighty nine comes from eighty nine percent of the protein. And that dog food is from a meat meat source so that's that's i haven't looked at it in a while but i think it's still the highest out there as, as far as making that claim for for meat um meat protein so anytime you can put more protein from a meat source like that and we kind of touched on that earlier with with the uh, sourcing of real meats but anytime you can do that it's going to be it's going to be really beneficial for the dogs and well dogs and uh it's just a more digestible pro, more more digestible source of protein. Uh, the amino acid profile in that and those real meats are going to be a little bit better than other protein sources, vegetable sources. Right. Like that. So anytime you can boost that that real meat content and any any dog food, it's going to be very beneficial for the dog. And you know now we're making eighty nine percent. It's it's amongst the highest, if not the highest, meat content, meat inclusive diet out there. It's still affordable price i mean you exactly. if something else is that high it's it's usually twice the price as well i hate to sell on price but i think it really mm -hmm. it really speaks volumes to what what diamond's doing um just the value they're creating and the way they're able to do that just um you know through our own manufacturing and and just the processes we use and and the uh the way we can buy ingredients um really yeah. speaks volumes of the value we're, we're offering everybody so mm -hmm. the protein nine too it's not just a single source protein i mean there's pork in that lamb and beef correct yeah uh, beef and beef and pork yeah pork. okay yeah so we uh pork's actually a new protein for us that that was one of the one of the first formulas we actually use pork in so um just offer some variety to the yeah. pet you know Anytime you can put any real meat in there, whether it be beef, pork, chicken, lamb, fish, it's going to be beneficial. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we went a little bit different direction, put some pork in there, which is, it's a lean protein as well, very palatable. And dogs, I can, you know, I've seen that line, that Pro 89 out there for a while now, and it's feeds really well and dogs really enjoy it. And we've had a lot of good results, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely more of a, a performance diet, or if you're looking to keep weight on a dog through the winter, you know, it, that's a great thing if you got outdoor dogs or even indoor dogs that, you know, if you maybe need to keep a little weight on them. Um, that's a great diet for that to, yeah. to keep weight. Or if you just have an active, active dog, it's a great, great diet as well to feed year round. But a lot of the guys um, obviously, uh, you know, bully breeds and, and, and things like that, that, that really want that peak physical condition. And uh, a lot of your hunting guys, you know, that's really what it's geared for. So, yeah. Yeah. We've had a lot of people switch over to the Pro 89 and then they're like, they, they are hooked on it. I guess they're yeah. hooked on it. Yeah. So yeah. it's been popular for people that were originally on the Diamond Naturals. And then whenever we started carrying the Pro 89, you know, they switched over to that and um, they were able to do that pretty easily too, which maybe we can like kind of lead into the next question about like transitioning your pet's food. And if people that are watching are interested about that, or if they're thinking to themselves like, well, we feed 
um, maybe this recipe, can you ever kind of mix the two, like with Pro 89 or, you know, the Diamond Naturals, like all life stages, um, can those be kind of rotated around, do you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, one of our other lines, Taste of the Wild, you know, we kind of built that line originally. It's been out for about, I don't know, 13 years or so, but you know, we've, we've got several different formulas, just different proteins in those formulas, whether it be, you know, lamb in the Sierra mountain or, you know, bison in the, the high prairie or, or duck in the wetlands, but it's really built really well for that rotational diet. You can always rotate your dog food. Um, some dogs, it just, you kind of got to pay attention to your pet. You know, our, our vet will tell you the same thing. It's, you know, some, some dogs get used to a certain thing. You feed them the same thing for a while. Yeah. You know, it can lead to stomach upset. Um, we always recommend if you do want to transition over to a new flavor or a new formula or a new brand, um, hopefully you're switching to us, but uh, you do it over a slow, like two week period, 10 to 14 days and just gradually introduce that mm -hmm. um, slowly, you know, 25% old dog food or excuse me, 25% new dog food with 75% uh, old dog food and then just do half and half for a couple of days and then three quarters of the new and then, you know, full on, you can, you can transition pretty easily in the, in the new stuff, but it should be a gradual transition because, you know, it's something it's, I hate to compare it to people, but if you, if you eat something, the same thing for 30 days, you can get stomach upset too. If you, if you yeah. switch it up all of a sudden. So it just, it does need to, we always recommend, you know, transitioning it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen dogs, cold turkey switch over to new food and be just fine but right. possibility of of uh upset with a lot of dogs out there but it's totally fine you can mix you know you can mix foods at your own at your own peril all of our dog foods are um complete and balanced so you don't need to do that but i guess you can mix them i know a lot of people do give their dogs some variety you know uh but it's all complete and balanced every formula is so yeah. there's no need to yeah, as as the dogs are eating it, and they they usually do are yeah. pretty tasty, so they usually enjoy it. But. Yeah, and your Pro eighty nine is definitely going to be more rich because it's got more protein in it than your your other recipes, right? Yeah, it's a little richer. So you know, a good starting point. I forgot to touch on that, but a good starting point is to look at your feeding guideline on the back as far as how much to feed. Um, that's on the back of every one of our bags, whether it be Taste of the Wild, Diamond, Diamond Naturals. Um, that's a good starting point. That's not to live by per se. Every dog's different, but that's a good starting point. You just kind of got to monitor your monitor yeah. your dog's condition. And, you know, if they're getting a little little heavy <laughs> around the direction, you might want to cut it back a little bit or, you know, feed a light um, or get them off the couch and play some fetch. But <laughs> The uh, nine would be really good for some of our daycare dogs too. All the dogs that go out to the West location and they're running around all day. Like I can see them doing well on it. Cause those yeah. are, those are the, the like hyper dogs, the really active ones, you know, those daycare dogs aren't at home sleeping. Like maybe some of your alls at home are doing right now, or like mine are right now in the back, they're sleeping, you know, those daycare dogs from, 7 30 to almost six o'clock at night they're like running around like crazy and barking and um uh, it's kind of entertaining to watch them play but yeah the pro 89 might be good for for some of those dogs that yeah for sure it's uh, in the, uh, even more energy to do some more barking and stuff so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah so that's good i'm glad we talked about pro 89 um the other thing that I forgot to mention is we carry your Diamond Natural Biscuits. So we have the beef, lamb, the peanut butter, puppy chicken. We have large breed chicken. And so um, those are some of our best selling treats because people grab them off the biscuit bar and um, a, lot, a lot better than the milk bones. How are your Diamond Biscuits better than the milk bones that maybe people would get like from the bank or something like that? Because I know Ralph. Can you repeat that, Brittany? You're kind of cutting out a little bit. Can you hear me? So I was asking how your Diamond Natural Biscuits are different from um, those kind of grocery store milk oh. biscuits. Yeah, I think I think if you just read our ingredient panel, um, they're a little bit cleaner ingredients. Yeah. It's you know it's it's kind of a part of our Diamond Naturals dog food line. It cuts out a lot of the uh, the fillers and things, the corn. Those biscuits use some rice as well as you know good high quality protein, 
like your lamb, your chicken, your, your, well, peanut butter's in there too. That's a popular one, but just a really clean treat. Dogs love them. You know, it's, it's a good thing to give, give your dog daily treat or just, you know, an award treat. They really like them, but you can feel pretty good about, you know, feed them as well. They're, they're, they're pretty healthy as well. So, you know, a lot of your grocery, grocery stuff, I'm not knocking any other treats or anything, but I, I think our stacks up really well against them. Um, I just, you know, you compare to, I would flip over the bag and read it, you know, compared to the grocery yep. brand. I think you'll, you'll find ours are a little bit, uh, yeah. little bit healthier and cleaner. So my dogs won't take them. I don't know if anybody else watching, like they won't take not diamond natural biscuits. They love those. They won't take the ones from like the banks and stuff, you know, uh, going through yeah. the drive through and and they're always like does your dog want a little biscuit and i'm like i don't want to be rude so i'm always like okay um but we own premium pets we don't really need more biscuits but i'll try to give them to them and they, they will not take those biscuits and raleigh will eat anything but he does not like any other biscuits but he loves the biscuits off the biscuit bar so yeah i need to i guess i need to get around to some local banks and and get them yes. naturals biscuits, huh? I think that would be awesome. You totally should. And yeah. then you tell them to get their diamond biscuits from Premium Pets. That's so right, that's for awesome. sure. Cool. All right. And then anybody watching, because we've had like a good steady amount of people watching. And if you guys have questions, um, like Tara's done, Nicole, if you guys just want to put those over um, on the screen, just comment and then. Um, Adam and I can do our best to answer them and, uh, and we can get to you on that. So oh, I, I'm sorry, guys. I just clicked on the comments. I just now saw all these. So <laughs> I'm new to this. So no, no. I, had, I had mine on the private chat link there and, uh, I've been missing all your comments. I really apologize, but it looks like a lot of good, uh, Oh yeah. A lot of good I, feedback. Appreciate it. Let's see here. It. Tara, Tara asks if we have Pro 89 samples. Yeah, we do. Um, Brittany can get those pretty easily if she doesn't have them in the store. Yeah, um, I think I do. And we, we make samples of all of our products, really. Yeah. Uh, like little six-ounce bags are really handy to see if your dog likes them. Also, you know, all of our foods are guaranteed, so satisfaction guaranteed. So on the rare occurrence that your dog doesn't like it, I don't take many returns back, but we do, you know, it is all guaranteed money back satisfaction. So let's okay. see here. Get them, get them to central and Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Or, <laughs> there. or Hawthorne. That's where we like to go. All of the banks. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about taste of the wild. Cause that's definitely one of your like flagship brands and, you guys came out with a new recipe. Was it the end of last year with the ancient grains? Yeah. So yeah, it's been out about a year. So Taste of the Wild has been a, a really big, uh, big food out there. You know, it came out, gosh, I was still in college, which seems like a long time ago, but that was 13 years ago. We launched that brand and, uh, I think we really pioneered, you know, there were grain free dog foods before that, but I think we really pioneered the grain free dog foods out there with that line. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there was a big kind of market shift to grain freeze with a lot of stuff going on in pet food. Um, not to harp on it too much, but there was just some stuff. You had some stuff going on with the melamine recall over in China. That's a long story. But anyways, there was a lot of a, a lot of demand for, for foods without grain. So you know, we launched the Taste of the Wild and it really caught on like wildfire, wildfire. And uh, I think for good reason, it's a great dog food, high quality proteins. The, the thing about grain free a lot of the times and Taste of the Wild really launched this is, is uh, we use some more unique protein sources. So instead of using like chicken, lamb, you know, your, your beef, we're using things like buffalo and, and salmon and uh you know we got a wild boar formula a, you right. know, duck, and uh it's just some more unique protein sources that's that's beneficial for a couple reasons um it can really help not only your dog likes them a little bit you know they might it's a little more flavorful but they uh they can be really beneficial for for skin issues as well um 
a lot of your, your allergies out there and skin issues come from proteins. Um, mm. You know, chicken is, is pretty highly, highly regarded from the vets as the number one allergen in dog food. Right. Not that it was bad, but, you know, um, so anytime, you know, if your dog has an issue with chicken, it's, it's good to feed a more unique protein source like that. And Taste of the Wild really fits the bill for that. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got the, the High Prairie, which is our probably our top seller, the most popular. That's a buffalo formula. We got a Pacific Stream salmon formula. Um, we got a lamb formula in the purple bag, the Sierra Mountain. Wild boar, beef and wild boar is in the Southwest Canyon. Uh, we got a small breed, small breed adult formula with some, ven- that's primarily a venison diet. Uh, pine forest, regular adult food is a venison diet. Mm-hmm. And we also string in some some puppy foods in there and cat foods. You can't forget about the cats. Um, right. Grain, fees, grain free is really beneficial for cats because, you know, cats really benefit from from higher protein found in grain freeze and just higher meat content usually found in grain freeze as well. So that's a, that's a, uh, cats just require. They need more meat. Yeah. They qu- require meat. Um, they're they more obligate carnivores than dogs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. dogs are omnivores and cats are actually obligate carnivores. So they need the meat and, uh, all of our cat foods like to taste the wild and, you know, diamond and everything is, is uh, perfectly suited, complete and balanced for cats. Um, yep. But yeah, that's Taste Wild's been a, a great, great food, and it's really uh, had a lot of good results out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we do um, sell quite a bit of the puppy. Um, it's a good grain free option for people who want to go that route. Um, again, there's three sizes. You can always start on that smaller bag first. If your puppy does really well on it, you can bump up to some of those bigger bags. Um, again, just to get a better volume, the bag's going to last longer. Um, and there's a high prairie for the puppy and also, uh, the Pacific stream option. So there's a puppy salmon formula too, if your dog's not big into the, um, the buffalo and the venison option, but those are pretty unique puppy recipes, I will say, because a lot of our other puppy options are going to be just chicken and rice. There's nothing wrong with chicken and rice. And a nice, like, when puppies the chicken and rice form, and they're just not as interested in it, I feel like switching to base of the wild will get them a little bit more um, excited about eating their food. So, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, I think that's been one of the big things with the taste of the wild is the, you know, the palatability dogs really love it. And uh, I think people enjoy feeding something that their dogs, you know, really enjoy eating. So that taste of the wild does really well for that. Yeah. What about your alls? Um, and I'm sorry, I guess Nicole's saying I'm cutting out a little bit. And yeah, I'm, I noticed that as well, but you're, I think you're good now on my end. I don't know about okay, Nicole, but. Okay. Um, I swear, like something's wrong with our internet. I am not sure. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, or have you talk about, Adam, is your um, canine strain probiotics, because that's in the taste of, that's in all of your recipes, not yeah. in or, or taste in the wild that's in all of your recipes so i think that's what makes you your guys's um food really unique too is how how you add these probiotics into it so like what is that and what do they do for the formulas yeah so you know that that's probably the most unique thing from diamond pet foods if if you take take anything away that's different about diamond is and our dog food is, is any cat food is our probiotics and you mentioned the canine strain, which is um, that's included in the dog food. And then there's a similar strain. It's called Viables probiotics in the cat food. But what's unique about them, and I really think we're setting the setting the bar out there for probiotics. Obviously, probiotics, I think everybody pretty well knows the benefits of probiotics, digestion and, you know, in, in dogs and cats and humans as well. A big part of your immune system is is located in the GI tract in pets. So anytime you can take care of that GI tract, you know, your digestive tract, um, you're actually not only improving digestion, but long-term it's very beneficial as well as far as fighting illnesses and keeping that immune system really, really tip top shape. So 
you know, we've, we've really put a lot of research into our probiotics. Uh, we launched those about six years ago and what makes them unique to finally get into it, um, is they're, they're specifically geared towards dogs and cats. So we've taken specific strains found in the GI tract of dogs and cats, the most viable, um, the most numerous strains that are actually found inside the GI tract of those pets. And we've duplicated them and put, included them into our dog food. So the benefit of that is, you know, dogs, dogs and cats are going to utilize those a lot better. Mm -hmm. They're going to be a lot more receptive to them. Um, and it's just more natural, just a more natural, uh, probiotic for them fits into their system a little bit better. As far as I know, I think we're the only company doing that, making pet specific probiotics. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That you that you actually use the strains in the yeah like um, dogs and cats. Yeah, there's there's if you, if you flip over the bag, there's there's three or four. If you look on the guaranteed analysis on the back, there's three or four uh, strains of probiotics in there. If you look under total microorganisms, mm -hmm. um, and it'll list those. They're long names. I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but. <laughs> Those are the ones. Those are the ones that are found most numerous. You know, the most viable, strongest strains in pe actual pet stomachs, and we've we've done the research on that, and uh, it's a it's a good thing to include. I, you know, the other part of it, kind of what makes it unique as well. Um, I know it sound, it doesn't sound like a big deal, but they're actually guaranteed in the bag. They're living in the bag, um, yeah. and pet food, that's that's a big feat to get that done because. A lot of your food out there is cooked through the extrusion process, ours included. Um, any kibble out there is, is pretty well cooked, whether it be baked or extruded. We use the extrusion process. Yeah. Well, there is some heat involved in that. And anytime you put probiotics or any of that bacteria, bacteria through the heat uh, cooking process, you're killing a lot of it off. Well, we've, we've remedied that and we put it on actually after we cook the food. So we blanket it on there pretty thick. <laughs> um, with a, I mean, it goes under a applicator after it cooks. So right, basically right before it goes into the bag to wow. go out to the, it's getting that, that probiotic mixture. Cool. So it's nice and fresh. Um, you know, if you look, I mentioned the guaranteed analysis, that's, that's where, you know, that's where the, uh, the guts of the food are. That's kind of what's in that bag. And ours is proudly displayed total microorganisms. You know, we, we guarantee them on there. I, I, I challenge everybody to look at other dog foods and mm -hmm. see if they can guarantee that because it's it's that's a big deal. I mean, it's uh, to put living probiotics in there, and we actually put much more probiotics in there than what's on that bag. But we actually, you know, we want to guarantee it throughout the shelf life of the product, which is a year. So that eighty million CFUs in there that is on that guaranteed analysis is what guaranteed. That's the guaranteed amount of probiotics we put in there. We put actually from production, we probably put billions upon right. billions in there. But those are the 80 million is what we can guarantee because those are what's living in there throughout the shelf life. And it's very therapeutic. Um, 80 million is way above uh, a therapeutic level for, for dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. 80 million use. So, yeah, the probiotic, the, the canine strain, um, if you take anything away about diamond, I always say that I think we really shine in we really shine in our probiotics. That's a that's a pretty groundbreaking thing. Um, not only for digestion, but just overall health. I mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the stuff I kind of get back to the livestock industry. If you if you kind of look at like overseas, um, a lot of your livestock and stuff over there, you know, there's there's this big shift towards probiotics to do more preventative, like a preventative measure for sickness instead of a reactive measure with antibiotics and things like that. You know, they're using, they're pumping, not pumping, but feeding a lot more probiotics in their yeah. dog to really prevent a lot of issues in livestock and, and things like that. And, you know, if we've kind of taken it into the pet food world, um, just giving your dogs and cats a healthy dose of probiotics every day to really prevent a lot of those health issues later on down the road that may save a trip to the vet. So, yeah. yeah. I did. I put that in the comments so that if anybody's watching this or um, there's something that I can really find in the 
so that's on there. Um, yeah, you're kind of cutting out. I know. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that last part. Sorry. Okay. You hear me now? Yeah, a little better. I, yeah. I think I'm gonna have to the next time, like, connect my laptop to an Ethernet cable or something. Just really spotty up here. So, but you, I, I don't think anybody has said anything about you cutting in and out. So that's good. Okay. Uh, and you're the one who <laughs> people hear more than me. So. Um, okay, so what about the ancient grains? So what makes that, what makes your piece of the wild ancient grains different from the uh, grain free recipes? Yeah, so the taste of the wild ancient grains is pretty new. Uh, we just launched that last year. You know, we wanted to make a diet with those high quality protein sources that are found in the taste of the wild grain free, the original formulas. Um, but we wanted to make something that is grain inclusive for those people that maybe want to, you know, have that grain mixture in there. You know, it's not your regular chicken and rice dog food or, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't use the, the run of the mill grains. It, it really uses, we call them ancient grains, which is a term. Um, I guess they're, uh, well, ancient, not like leftover from last year, ancient, but just, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're using more, I would call them more, uh, more unique, less, less commercially used grains. So in the, in the ancient grains food, the taste of all ancient grains, we're using, you know, millet, um, instead of like say rice, we're using millet, quinoa, chia seed, uh, sorghum, grain sorghum, which we got a lot of that around central Missouri, uh, Milo more or less, but, um, you know, those those offer a lot of great benefits to the pet as well. Great slow burning carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. It's a really good source of carbohydrates. And, you know, your grain free has has good sources of carb carbohydrates as well, whether it be potato or peas. Um, but you always need kind of get off on a tangent. You always have to have some kind of in a pet food. You have to have some kind of starch to hold that that pet food together. And it does benefit. It really does benefit the pet as a, as a source of energy as well. So right. we're constantly, you know, pushing the envelope, trying to use different ingredients. Um, and the ancient grains is is definitely uh, the latest one. It's just uh, you know those ancient grains are I can't say enough about them. They're really really good good source of carbohydrates, good source of energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ancient grains uh, same uh protein sources as the the grain free so you still have Sierra Mountain which is lamb and you've got the exchange salmon you've got um the high prairie you still got that one what's the fourth one I'm missing um you got the ancient wetlands so wetlands. Yeah, any of them, yeah we kind of we make yeah they're just they're just a carryover of the original taste of the wild line whether it be the 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 high prairie it's called ancient prairie the pacific stream and the ancient grain line is called ancient stream the wetlands is called ancient wetlands you know we just got that ancient in there so yeah uh, kind of differentiate it but uh no i've heard a lot of good things about them i mean a lot you know a lot of a lot of people told me their dogs actually prefer the ancient grains to the original they think it feed you know they, they the dogs like it which i've heard it the other way too but um I know it feeds well and it's very digestible. It's just a good solid, good mm -hmm. solid diet with those unique proteins and, and those unique grains. If you really want to keep your dog interested in something. Yeah. Um, you can do that, so it's just a good way to give them some variety, but you're still sticking with in pieces of wild. You know, so if they give them a free recipe, obviously differently the ingredient panel is different from the ancient grain recipe. So you know, the different um, the grains um, being different and unique. Um, I think it's it's something that if you're, if you're already feeding Taste of the Wild, maybe you want to switch over and try some of the ancient grains, you know. Um, it should be pretty um, easy to transition the two, right? Yeah, so with similar proteins we're using, so it's really easy to transition. Even from protein to protein, different flavors to different flavors. Yeah. Um, a lot of it's the same. The protein may be different, but the ingredient profile is pretty similar. So it's it's really minimal uh, transition for those. So, yeah. you know, you, you talk about rotational diets. 
you know, taste of the wild, whether it be ancient grains or the original formulas, it's really set up well for the transition. All you're doing is changing proteins. Um, Nicole, Nicole had a question here about ancient grain, but gets acid reflux. Nicole, that's probably the first time I've heard of that. I don't, I wouldn't be comfortable recommending what to do with that. I don't, um, Brittany may be able to help you, you know, goat milk. I've always heard does well, but it says it wasn't a huge help for you. Um, I wonder if there's just like some kind of grain intolerance going on too. I mean, and sometimes that is a factor. Like sometimes there are dogs that just can't handle the grains very well. And that's where we see a lot of times where people will come in and they'll, they'll be looking to transition their pet's food. I'll ask them, what are you feeding? And if they're on a grain in recipe, I might recommend a grain free because it might just be some kind of flare up or intolerance and they're not able to really digest it well. So. Yeah. And Nicole, if uh, going off what Brittany said, if if you ever want to, if you do want some help, I know our vet really, really is a huge help that we have in our office. Dr. Mm -hmm. Alexia, she she deals with that kind of stuff. I don't pretend to be a nutritionist. I don't pretend right. to be a vet. I'm, <laughs> you know, she's she's the one that would be able to feel that. If you want to give our office a call, just the uh, customer service number on the back of the bag, you can call and talk with with Dr. Heldman about that. And she, I'm sure she would have some good recommendations for you. Sorry, I can't help more. That's really cool. Like you bring up having a vet on staff. I mean, do you, what? I guess what's the role of the vet on staff? Are they? I guess I'll just let you speak speak to that a little bit for us. Um, do you have multiple vets on staff, or we have one full time, and then uh, we actually have one that does some consulting stuff for us too. So more or less two two on staff. But it's just good to have, as a pet food company, it's good to have a vet just to field questions, customer service questions, um, give recommendations from a medical standpoint. Um, they are involved a little bit in the, well, a lot in the formulation process as well as for, for new formulas. Um, but yeah, she's, she's worth her weight in gold <laughs> for us yeah. in the customer service world. She really helps out a lot. Dr. Dr. Feldman does a good job. So. Okay. Let's talk about, we don't have too much longer. I, I knew this would go by really fast. Yeah, it has. It's already 1245. Holy I know. Know. As long as you need me, but I know lunch hour can be short. So. <laughs> And um, let's talk about your prey recipe because, again, like that's that's so different from the other ones that we've talked about this afternoon. We've touched on Diamond Naturals. We've talked about Taste of the Wild and your new Ancient Grain recipe. What makes prey unique? So prey actually goes a little bit of a, a step beyond what Taste of the Wild was doing as far as unique proteins. Um, the prey is is a truly basic, simple, limited ingredient diet. Um when I say limited ingredient, it's probably the most limited ingredient diet out there. So the limited ingredients really benefit pets that may have stomach issues, uh, skin issues, digestive issues. Um, and you can obviously feed it to pets without those issues, but it's super simple. You know, I, I would compare it more or less to like a wholesome, you know, you hear about these simple not keto. I can't say the word keto diet, but it's just more wholesome ingredients, simple, basic. Um, you know, we've got four key ingredients in that dog food, the prey. When I say key ingredients, that's one source of protein, one source of fat, one source of carbohydrates, and one source of fiber. Mm -hmm. And your typical dog foods out there may have 15 to 20 key ingredients. Well, anytime you add more ingredients like that, it can, it can really contribute to um, allergy issues. If your dog's having that, you know, it can, it can contribute to digestive issues, but anytime you can simplify those diets for issues like that, um, it can definitely be better for the pet and pray really ingredient out there. Limited ingredient diet. <laughs> I think somebody's hungry in the background there might need some prey now. So. <laughs> I know. I think Raleigh would start chiming in here. Um, I hear the word prey and they go crazy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And um, and there's prey cat food, too. I mean, everything that we've talked about today um, is the same for, for cats. So. Um, yeah. 
I don't talk about cat food enough. You can't forget about the cats. You know, cats have have really special nutritional uh, nutritional needs too. And the prey does super well for cats because it's it's even more limited. It's three key ingredients. So, you know, you got that protein, fat, and carbohydrate in there. Um, it's super limited, really high in in meat content. I haven't looked at that figure in a while, but I want to say over half that half that formula in that cat food is is meat. I want to say. Yeah, meat I think you me that one time. Yeah, and it's really it's just super high in 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 meat content, which cats really love. I haven't heard of a cat yet that's turned down the, the prey because it's so. It's just got a lot of that meat content in there, and they really like it. And it's really easy, easy on their stomach, super simple. You know, if you're looking for a simplistic diet, just more wholesome, um, you know, the prairie is a great way to go. And, you know, we haven't talked about it. I know you put it on your post here off to the side, but we got a really good frequent buyer program on on the Taste of the Wild and the Prey. Okay. The Taste of the Wild is a buy 10, get one. I think you labeled that over there. So it's a loyalty program that's that's exclusive to premium pets. Um, no other retailer in Jeff City actually has that program. So... That's a good thing. Go in and see Brit, Brittany and get signed up on that deal. The, the Taste of the Wild, the regular Taste of the Wild is a buy 10, get one free program. 10 bags, one free. And then the Prey is actually a buy eight bags, get one free. So that's something you can uh, really capitalize on and, and get a free bag after a while. So, yeah. And we have samples of those too. Um, the, the protein sources for dog, um, there's beef, turkey, and trout. And for the cat, there's beef and turkey, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And those are single, just single source. So mm -hmm. it's just one, one source protein, whether it be beef, turkey, or mm -hmm. any of those other ones. So yeah. So we're doing good on time. We're doing good on all the questions. Let's see. I was looking to see if there's anything else. Adam, is there anything else you want to add before you know we kind of conclude here? I, you know, I'm just kind of an open, anything y'all want to ask me, I'm here to answer. I didn't really have anything else. I think we, we touched on a lot of stuff that yeah. we wanted to discuss. And uh, I can just say for whoever's listening, go check out Premium Pets. If you haven't already, chances are you have, but I was just super excited for Brittany when they opened up. I was really happy to hear of a local a local retailer in Jeff city. I think we were missing that really badly and there's nobody better than Brittany to fill that gap. She's done a great job. And, uh, as you can tell, she's, she's growing. She's got two locations now, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, but just go check her out. I, it's important to now more than ever. I think it's, it's important to support local business. I, I really, uh, that's an important thing to do these days. So Brittany does a great job. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. And I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Adam's on the road right now. So uh, I appreciate him taking time from his busy schedule to talk to you all and, and uh, for you guys to learn more about Diamond and why we love carrying Diamond. You know, we're very selective about the foods that we choose to carry with premium pet. And um, Adam and a, another one of our friends, Bruce, was actually one of the first two guys that I talked to before opening up the store. <laughs> I remember that day. That was, that was a little different coming to see you up at, <laughs> up, at Mizzou, up there on campus. Yeah, they came to campus and, and met with Mizzou and um, I didn't really know what I was getting into, but they really helped me open up my store. And so I appreciate you guys a lot. Um, Brad uh, texted me. He didn't put it on the comment section, but uh, you guys do have a full line of canned food. We didn't really talk about canned food. Um, we carry all of the Taste of the Wild canned food recipes. Those are um, grain-free options. Um, they're kind of more like a gravy base with chunks of meat. And then the cat food that we carry is kind of the same thing with Taste of the Wild. It's more like gravy based with chunks of meat and um then the diamond naturals um for the dogs and cats is going to be all pate but we do have all of the canned food as well yeah and those canned foods are a great great supplement to your dry dog food you can feed them as a as a primary 
food too without even feeding you know they're all uh completely nutritionally uh, uh what's complete is what we're looking they're for they're <laughs> so you can feed them as a primary primary food in addition you can add them to to your kibble to keep your pets interested um they make a great meal topper and yeah providing more moisture to their diet for sure yeah yeah, and you talk about cats being picky and stuff. It's great to throw a throw some canned food on top. You know, they can be a little finicky sometimes. So anytime you can add that that moisture, that that real meat, um, with some canned food, it it'll keep pets interested. So. Oh, well, guys. Well, I know Adam needs to get back on the road. He's going to Kansas City today, and. So, uh, Adam, thanks so much again for joining. And if you guys ever have any questions for me or for Adam, you know how to get a hold of us. And um, we totally have samples in the shop um, for dogs and cats. We have the awesome loyalty program that's exclusive to us. So um, if you are looking to switch over to Diamond Pet Foods, um, we can get you hooked up. <laughs> so, yeah. all right, Adam, we'll have a good Thanksgiving with your family and we'll talk later. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. We'll see you later.